Okay, class, let's continue on with the chapters with costs. Now we're going to look at the flow of costs through our system, okay, through our business. Uh, RM stands for raw materials, our materials, so RM is raw materials. Uh, WIP, W-I-P, is work in process or work in progress. And then FG would be finished goods, okay? At the beginning of the period, all of these will have a, a beginning balance. And I'm just going to put in some numbers here. Let's say our beginning balance in raw materials is 100000 Let's say our beginning balance in work in process is $150,000 worth of costs. And let's say our finished goods, uh, we have $100,000 at the beginning of the period in finished goods. Okay, so there are our balances. Now let's just see how costs flow through our system. Once again, raw materials, work in process, finished goods, they're all inventories. They're all assets on our balance sheet. All right, so beginning inventory plus our purchases. And let's assume that our purchases are 900,000. Okay, so we've got a million dollars worth of raw materials. Does that just sit there? What happens to that? Okay, <clears throat> what happens to our raw materials area? Well, what happens is the people that, that are manufacturing, that are putting together the tables, that's our example of tables, um, they're going to come over to our raw materials area and requisition, meaning take some of the materials, so they'll have to you know, fill off paperwork, so requisition, taking materials out of raw materials and moving them into work in process. Okay, so let's say that we have transferred out, I'm just going to put minus transferred, um, let's see, $950,000 worth of material. Okay, so that's a negative dollar amount. So then this becomes direct materials, our raw materials, I'm going to change it to direct materials, now get moved over here. Okay, so we've got 150000 in work in process costs. Now we're adding material costs of 950000 Let's just finish this up over here um, before we move on. Our ending balance then, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is a million minus 950000 or 50,000 is our ending balance of raw materials at the end of the period. So when we do this for the next period, this will become our beginning balance, all right? All right, let's look at work in process now. We have 150 of costs. That's just not material costs, it's all sorts of costs in there. So what other costs go into work in process, okay? Well, our conversion costs, remember from our other previous video? Conversion costs will go in here. Our direct labor plus our manufacturing overhead or factory overhead. Those costs will also go in there, okay? So let me just put some numbers down here. Let's say our, our labor for this time period is a million dollars of labor. And let's say our overhead is a half a million, 500,000, okay? So now here we've got all these costs in here. Do these costs stay in here forever? No, they need to move out. Once we finish a table, what happens to those costs? Well, we'll accumulate those costs and we'll move them into finished goods, okay? And this is cost of goods manufactured. If you remember, I used that term in our last video, cost of goods manufactured. So there's a negative sign there, because that's going to be subtracted out. Um, and let's see, I'm subtracting out a uh, cost of 2.4 million. So 200, 2,400,000 get transferred out. So over here, I'm going to put a positive cost of goods manufactured. Ugh. Hold on. COGM, cost of goods manufactured. So then these get transferred up here. So this is a positive number here, okay? Because these costs are coming out of here, so this is negative. I'll just put a negative sign around these transfers out, okay? Just to make sure that we're clear. So then our ending balance for work in process would be uh, 200,000, okay? Adding 150 to 950, subtracting out the million, uh, adding in 500,000, subtracting out 2 point, wait, 150 plus 950, adding in a million, adding in 500,000, subtracting out 2.4 million, gets us 200,000 left in work in process. Okay, now we've got our beginning finished goods of 100,000. We just transferred in costs of, from work in process, our cost of goods manufactured of tables that are finished. Now, what happens to these costs? Do they get transferred out? Of course they do eventually, once they're sold, all right? And then they become cost of goods sold. 
And let's say our cost of goods sold is 2 million, 200,000, 2.2 million. So then our ending balance would be 300,000. And then I like to just put a little arrow here for a cost of goods sold, because that's a separate account of 2.2 2, 2 million, okay? This is on our income statement, right? Because this is an expense. I'm gonna put that down right here, just so that we know. This is an expense. This cost of goods sold is an expense on our income statement, all right? Now, you'll recall from our last video that I said uh, we've got our beginning inventory plus what we purchase gets us our cost of goods manufactured, okay? Okay? So beginning inventory uh, plus these costs here gets us our cost of goods manufactured, okay? So our cost of goods manufactured uh, are all of these costs here accumulated that, that get accumulated into our product that once they're done, they get moved into finished goods inventory. So then we either have them still, they're either an ending inventory or they got moved out. Cost of goods sold. Okay? All right. So this is how costs flow through our system. And there are debits and credits. And we'll look into that in our next chapter when we look at the debits and credits. So when we purchase materials, we're obviously going to debit raw materials inventory and probably credit a payable. Or if we pay cash, it'll be cash. And then once we move it out, we'll will decrease our raw materials and will increase our work and process inventory. But once again, we'll see that in a different video. All right? Thanks, class.